Okay, another devlog update for this uh, Souls-like controller I'm building out. It started as kind of a controller template and has become a bit of a demo because uh, there was enough features and stuff I wanted to do examples of and have included that it just started growing a little bit further and uh, has become a whole demo. But there's a lot of useful things that you'll be able to borrow and reuse, like you know how to do a title screen, how to uh, reload the map in a Souls-like way so that you can go back into the enemies after you've killed a few and you know, come back level up and you know, reload the map. Um, let's show you some of the stuff that's changed since before. Uh, well, we still have the different animation types, and again, you'll be able to remap these animations and animation trees to any character that has its skeleton mapped into Godot. And the skeleton's a standard skeleton, so anything Unity, Unreal, Mixamo, et cetera, that, that type of skeleton will remap just fine to all these animations. Um, none of the animations are two-handed to avoid some of the scale issues that a skeleton could have. So that should make it so that even if you have a weirdly shaped character, like a short kid, Zelda-like or something, um, these animations will still work for them and, and look relatively normal. Um, I've got more of the, the gadget logic straightened out. Um, some of the, like the left hand actions, um, guarding, including like how it'll affect your stamina or how it'll affect your health bar in the corner when getting hurt. So that's all straightened out. Um, you, every weapon, every gadget in the left hand can, can card. So even if you equip like a sword to left hand, it'll guard if you do L, L1. I'm, I'm using a PlayStation controller, so I'm going to refer to everything that way. I'm not using my keyboard and mouse. Um, L2 will do a special gadget action. This is like a you know, shield bash. Um, you have your light attacks. You have your heavy attacks with every weapon that you have equipped. So light attacks, although with the heavy sword, of course, is all kind of bigger. Uh, and then in the left hand weapons or gadgets, you can also swap those. Um, I've got a crossbow this time. Uh, again, L1 will guard, so it's guarding with the crossbow. It's far weaker. And uh, L2 will, you know, shoot an arrow. And you'll see there it is paraboloid. There is gravity for that arrow, which is kind of neat. Um, and pretty much any item, every item is running off the same script. Uh, that has you know light power, strong power, critical chance, weapon type, gadget type. Because again, any weapon can be used as a gadget in the left hand. Any gadget can be used as a weapon in the right hand. Um, and then whether enemies got the equipped, <laughs> whether you're attacking enemies or whether they're attacking players, because enemies can also use these weapons. I just try to build it like really flexibly. Um, but here, let's let's do this. I'm gonna remove the great sword off my back. I'll remove the crossbow off my back. Let's swap in some other items. Let's do like the torch as my back gadget. And let's bring in like the spear, so you can see another set of animations uh, for the back weapon. All right, we'll fire up the game again. Get past the title screen. And now we've got the spear. The spear has its own set of animations, focused on lunging and taking advantage of the, the, those ranged attacks. Um, big, long stabs, good stuff. Uh, and then the left hand, you know, you can see the torch hanging off my butt if I push. Uh, left on my d-pad, I pull out the torch. Torch self lights. It actually illuminates, which is kind of cool. Put it away, it goes away. So just a lot of that little logic's already taken care of. Uh, the same thing with a lot of the enemies. Oh, I've set up uh, targeting the targeting reticle. There's multiple enemies. I did straighten out the targeting camera, so you can uh, <coughs> switch left and right between what enemies are on the screen. Uh, if you get too far in, far in front of this guy, he'll come after you. Um, ah, being ambushed. I wish I had my broadsword. Let's do this. Let's just kill these guys with a little bit of range. All right, so as you can see, enemies are taken care of. Um, oh yeah, left hand attack for the uh, torch. I didn't even bother using it. Uh, but there you go. You can kind of see that enemy logic's taken care of. Um, you saw that there was one guard here. The other guard was just on a patrol, and he happened to see me, because um, enemies, again, are on paths. So, ah, ha, ha. So they'll follow back and forth between patrol paths that you can quickly, you know, you'll drag and drop in a character, quickly draw a path, and they will follow it. Um, I'll flesh out this demo a little bit further. I may even add a two-phase boss so you can kind of see how to do phases and things like that. Um, let's take a quick glance at the code as well so you can kind of see how you'll be able to reuse this. Because, again, you'll be able to swap in your own characters and quickly attach all this logic to them in just a few minutes. Like, it really doesn't take long because I've had to redrop in this character a few times as I've added and removed things. So uh, it is very quick how fast you can rearm all of this stuff to a new to a new character, new mesh, a new skeleton. Uh, but let's take a quick look at the, the script loosely. I'm going to fold up all the lines so you can kind of see how it works. And the AI for the enemies works the same way. 
Uh, but basically everything's a function, including movement, including the camera controlling, including uh, things like the uh, collision boxes for attacks, so that your collision box isn't always on all the time when you're attacking or, or getting hurt, um, the arrow shooting. But anyway, everything is an individual function as much as possible, so that if you want to you know, move this code over to another another character, or another or you're building an entirely new character controller, but you liked maybe the way that Dodge works, um, you should be able to copy and paste this code, and a lot of it will work. I tried to uh, avoid too much dependency on, on other things outside of these functions. So even times where it would have been smarter to not pack it all into a function, I did it anyway, just to try to make it very modular, so you can copy and paste. Um, but anyway, what I mean by copy and paste is in the physics process, you have a really basic state machine of, you know, dead, you're free and available, uh, you're attacking, you're doing an action, like a, that would be like healing or, or activating something. Um, gadget, you know, left hand action like the crossbow, whether you're defending, you have these general states, and then whatever functions you type in under any given state, those abilities become available to the character. So if you wanted to have, you know, if you didn't want when, when defending to be able to use a potion, if you want to make it a little bit harder and when they've got the shield up, they're not allowed to uh, swap using a potion, they've got to let go of the shield first and then drink, um, we could just delete this line and then they wouldn't be able to use a potion anymore. Or for example, there's no there's no jump here while defending. If I want to suddenly allow this character to jump while defending, I just type in jump, the name of the, the function for all the jump logic. And then now, when I'm defending, I can jump while defending. And all the logic relating to defense is still active, and now I can jump, which is, you know, kind of neat. Oh, I forgot to mention the sprint. Um, so there's walk, uh, there's a walk speed, run speed, and sprint speed, sprint drains your your endurance, as you may have seen up in the corner. Um, cool. Um, all the weapons, all, all the gadgets are all using the same script. They all contain light power, strong power, critical chance, um, the weapon type, gadget type, and whether they're attacking targets or they're attacking players, because enemies can also use these, these weapons and the collision shapes will need to know what they're allowed to attack. Um, so you just, yeah, one script for any weapon you decide to build. The weapon just needs to be in Area 3D um, with a collision shape, and you're done. You can make it any way you want. Um, all the items in the game, which has been fun so far, are just primitives from Godot. That's why none of them are too fancy. Uh, everything is just built from <laughs> creating quick meshes and slapping them together into, into funny shapes. And you can see from like the shield, or really from the, uh, the torch. It's just a few pipes and nonsense. Um, but yeah, so that's it coming along. It's still not done. There's a few more things I want to take care of, but it's getting closer, and I'm really excited for all of you to enjoy it. And again, I'm sure there's going to be stuff you guys hate and want to fix. I'm not trying to make the perfect controller. This is meant to be just general use that you'll be able to steal the bits you want and need for your own stuff, and you can run with it. It'll all be um, Creative Commons zero. You'll be able to use it however you like. Um, and yeah, that's all. So getting really excited. It's getting really close. Uh, thanks all.